<laughs> Did he used to have a son who was a graduate? Graduate? The last time I see he was Stephen Cars. It's the same one, but Trilogy tell me he graduated. Well, I ain't surprised. Everybody in this country is a graduate. And this is the only country where graduates can read and write. But well, what happened to Trilogy? They caught he asked him. Mm. No, but the police carried on here and he sent to the precinct and nearly charged them as terrorists. They carried on the graduate with a curry powder tin in his hand, claiming that he got the ingredients for making chemical weapons. Mm. Anyway, let me tell you about me incidents and accidents before I get to Triloki. You know, ever since the bombing at the World Trade Center, I noticed people looking at me strangely. Everywhere I turn, people are avoiding me like a leper. One day in Manhattan, I run to catch the bus. And suddenly, I see people scattering in all directions when they see me coming. Two of them run under a truck and break up their hand and foot. Two of them plunge through a glass window to get away. Up to now, they're still lying on a hospital bed. Then suddenly, out of nowhere, the police appear. The next thing you know, they handcuff me and got me lying on the ground. And what happened? They beat you? Beat me? <laughs> you all like just watch TV. And what happened to Rodney King wouldn't happen to me. I lie them quiet as a mouse and let them search me. But why they search you? You ain't a bad man for the carrying weapons. Yeah, but they said they find a weapon on me. But you know me, since from Guyana, I just walk with a roti in my back pocket for lunch. But when they see the roti, they seal up a whole area in Manhattan and send for the bomb squad. Is an Indian man from a nearby restaurant had to come over and tell them that what I had in my back pocket was a sada roti and not plastic explosives. Anyway, I learned since. I stopped walking around with sada roti in my back pocket. But if the police then beat you, how you get the blows? I'm coming to that now. You know that's got a mask in Brooklyn. Well, one night I'm going home late on the train with my Muslim cap on my head when four men surround me. One of them asked me, you an Egyptian Muslim? I said, no, no, as a Muslim from Guyana. It's then the licking start. They start coughing and kicking me in all directions. I open my mouth to cry out and my fast teeth shoot out and skid across the floor. To this day, I don't know where the teeth gone. And I bring the teeth from Guyana. And nobody didn't help you? The conductor didn't do anything? The conductor? After I take my licking for a full 10 minutes, he tell the men if they don't leave the train at the next stop, he will call the cops to them. Mm. So what did he do? Did he send you to the hospital? Hospital? Any normal man would have take five or six weeks to recover from the beating. But I just work with a Jew. So early next morning, I had to crawl to work. Couple days after, I in the train again with a new set of hours teaching him out. I sit down relaxing. When I noticed these four graduates in a car and watching me, I said, uh oh. It looked like trouble before, even before my new fast get a chance to settle on my gum. Eventually, one of the graduates come over and asked me if I was a Muslim. And you tell them you is a Muslim. <laughs> you think I stupid? I learned sense from the first beating. The only man who I got tell I is a Muslim is Muhammad, on whom be peace. Nobody else. Anyway, I said no, no, as a Hindu. Another one said Hindu or Muslim, all is the same. They come over again and the legs start again. They start kicking and coughing me from all anger. And it's so taking blows. Me making a song, I just taking blows. But why, Mustafa? Why you didn't shout out and alert the rest of the people on the train? Shout out? Girl, I had to borrow money from my boss, Mr. Goldberg, to buy this teeth. If I didn't open my mouth, I was going to lose it again. And I'm still paying you for this teeth. And the conductor didn't do anything? Yeah, he do something. He tell them I get enough blows to leave my life so I could walk to the airport and return where I come from. Boy, boy, Mustafa, you could take a lot of licks. You got a lot of stamina for blows. The licks ain't done yet. I get more after that. One day, Mr. Goldberg asked me to lock, walk late. So I tell you, you're frightened to walk late after them two beatings. He tell me if I didn't walk late, he gonna take back the fast teeth and lock it up in his safe. I'm still paying you for this teeth, so I had to do what he said. You didn't expect me to walk around the city with my face mashed up like a sour sap. Why didn't let him send you home in a taxi? Julie, you forget I tell you that Mr. Goldberg is a Jew. Anyway, 
Men are finished work and go up to your office and ask you if you could lend me a yamaka. You know the little cap the Jews does wear? I figure if I wear a yamaka, nobody would take me for a Muslim. So he said, okay, take off the yamaka and lend me. But he said, if you damage it, I'm going to have to make you a new one. I tell you about my boss, Mr. Goldberg. You didn't just tell me that the man is a Jew? Yeah, but I didn't tell you about the head. Mr. Goldberg had so big, he just take two barbers to cut the hair. <laughs> when I put on the, the yamaka, it fit like a washing basin on my head. I had to cut it before it could fit right. The amount of cloth I cut off, could I make a shot for a little boy. Anyway, I catch the train at night, and for the first time in a long time, I'm feeling safe. Nobody didn't tell me a word. Mr. Goldberg, it was really working. Then the train stopped and a group of graduates get on. This time, they was Hispanic. When I know a little Spanish, I said to myself, if I talked to them in their own language, they would leave me alone. Eventually, one of the graduates come over and ask me if I is a Jew. I so frightened, I forget everything but Mr. Goldberg had and say in Spanish, Yo soy Puerto Rican, yo. I am Puerto Rican. Hmm. He call out the graduate friends them, He's a Puerto Rican Jew. They come over and they start putting lips in my skin again. Was lips like peas and poor Mustafa. Mr. Goldberg had fall off my head. Mr. Goldberg teeth fall out my mouth. Then I fall down unconscious. So what did conductor do this time? Hmm. Barely pick up my teeth and Mr. Goldberg cap and he call the cops. But the graduates did long gone. When the cops come now, before they carry me to the hospital, they want to arrest me for impersonating a Jew. That was the last time I get licks. But it still cost me because now I got to replace Mr. Goldberg hat that I cut up. Well, well, thank God you ain't dead or crippled. But tell me, what happened to Triloki, man? You know Triloki just live in Long Island. You mean relocate to Long Island? <laughs> When Indian people move in Queens or Brooklyn, they just move out. But when they move to Long Island, they just relocate. They used to live next door to the Harry Prasads, but the, but the, but the Yankee daughter said the neighborhood is too depressing. Them is the words they just use when they save a little money. Relocate and depressing. She said, America, you gotta keep up with the Joneses. But since the next door neighbors was Harry Prasads, you could see the problem there. English language never say anything about keeping up with the Harry facades. Does what Amnes do. They think by living next to white people, people would think they white and treat them different. But look at you, Mustafa. If you were living in Long Island, it's not the same looks you would get. Living next door to white people does not change the color of your skin. Long Island is a far away from Mr. Goldberg factory. So could I end up getting double X or my ass broke instead of my face twist? Anyway, Triloki moved to Long Island. Pardon me? Relocate <laughs> next door to my name Jones in Long Island. I want that was real fortunate for the Yankee girl. Now she could really catch up with the Joneses. Well, this man is a different type of Jones. They should have called him Runaway Jones instead. He used to live in Richmond Hill Force. When all the Indians start to move in, he ups and run to Long Island to get away from them. Well, now Miss Yankee, I wonder how she gets along with them. <laughs> well, of course they ain't talking. Even when she call up, hello, the man turn in his face like he deaf. That's the first sign of trouble when you move in next door to white people and they don't like you. The next thing, bombs flying through the window. I prefer to live among my own people, even though they're black hearted and they start with them behind my back. Chiloki deserve we get. Well, the only thing Chiloki do was to cook a hot dog curry in a white neighborhood in Long Island. But wait, I you know it's against the law to cook curry in Long Island. I thought this was a free country. It's a free country so long as your curry smell stay in your house and don't burn anybody's eyes. You see, a couple days after the bombing, Chiloki was cooking the curry in the kitchen when he opened the window to let this curry smell out. The same time, Jones was washing the car in the yard when the curry smelled like he upside it down like a hurricane. When he smelled naked, the poor white man fell to the ground screaming for murder. The police and ambulance people that come had, that come, had to wear gas masks. So strong was that curry. 
extra loki must use plenty hot pepper and spices from India in the curry. I hear in some parts of India and Pakistan, they just use curry powder instead of gunpowder instead of gunpowder to fight their wars. <laughs> I ain't know what Chaloki makes, but Jones' eyes and lungs get serious burn. The doctor said any dangerous chemical gas could do that kind of damage. That is why the police go back and arrest Chaloki and his son. When the police enter the house, they find the graduate with the curry powder in his hand, adding more curry powder to the pot. <laughs> Chaloki and his son, the graduate, nearly get charged for terrorism and for waging chemical warfare against a poor U.S. citizen. Anyway, the matter settled now. They had to swear in front of a judge not to cook curry anymore while Jones living next door to them. That's a terrible thing, eh? I wonder what Triloki doing now. I ain't know about he, <laughs> but the Yankee daughter moving with the Harry Prasads. She said without she curry, she can't live. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know all of that. I didn't even read it in the local newspapers. And you know, Triloki brother owns one of them newspapers and he didn't write about it. Mm. You only got about 10 guys in these newspapers and the only thing they don't have is news. When you open one, it's like you're looking at a, a family album. First you see the publisher's face, then you see the father face, then you see the brother face, then you see the mother-in-law face. On, on, on Halloween days, you don't even see the children face. Well. I hear it's very popular in Guyana because people send it down, they're like mad. <laughs> of course it's popular. People in the countryside soaking it and, and calling it Richmond Cloud because it's cheaper than toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> One TV company down there advertising it as the Richmond Cloud as the tissue with the smoother and softer wipe. <laughs> anyway, girl, where are you heading? I'd like to the fabric store and buy some cloth. Well, I better go with you then. What you want come with me for? I thought you said you don't want to have no dates with me. What's wrong with you, girl? It's just a joke I'm making. It's only my face twist. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go and buy cloth to make a yamaka for Mr. Goldberg. You see my crosses? The man said he don't want no cotton yamaka. So I got to buy two yards of satin to cover his big head. You see my crosses? <laughs> anyway, watch. You better go out. Because I'm going in no rain to buy no cloth for Goldberg. Um, I can just wrap up a bed sheet and carry it for you. Um, but thanks for bringing mangrove package, eh? Yeah? Right. Um, mangrove does make a real good pepper sauce. You want to take some for no, yourself? No, 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 no. I got, I got, I got. I, yeah. I, it, mangrove does make good pepper sauce. All right. I got, I'll call you. I'll All right. You take care, Dolari. <laughs> You're still looking good, man. <laughs> You're Dolari, you? Guyana, El Dorado. <laughs> this mangrove turning into a rat now. Living free in my house, reaping all the crops from my backyard and selling this small, small bottle of pepper sauce. Let me see what you have to write now. on the court. Old Parson George left his wife. <laughs> What's this? Take the half of the of the gallon bottle of pepper sauce for yourself and give the other half to Uncle George. This is not even 28 ounces, much less half a gallon. What's wrong with this woman? It's thief, she thief me. It's thief, the lorry thief me, me pepper sauce. No wonder she telling me. Hmm. Mango could make a real nice pepper sauce. No, no, I really need none. It's okay. I'm gonna call you, Mustafa. Yeah. I had a hard time finding a 15-year-old rum. 
So when you and Uncle George take a drink, remember I too want to come to America. Hmm, Mangro, you might be a crook, but you know you like him. Exchange my rum and, and, and get my pepper sauce. 